Hi, my name is Don Jones, and welcome to Beginning Web Development, or as I like to call it, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, AJAX, and a little bit of PHP. So why are we going to focus on these technologies? Well, no matter what kind of web development you choose to do, you probably are going to be using technologies like JavaScript, jQuery, and AJAX. Those kind of go together in a bundle. AJAX is a way for your JavaScript to access resources and information that's stored on a server. jQuery is a way to make that JavaScript code easier to write. You're always going to be using HTML and CSS, the hypertext markup language and cascading style sheets. Those are the two markup languages that are read by a web browser and used to actually create the visual display that, that you see when you look at a web browser. And we're also going to learn just a little bit of PHP. It's a cross-platform, open source, server-side scripting language. In other words, it's a programming language that you use on a web server, and you can, oh, you can do pretty much anything with it, access databases and so forth. Now, there are lots of server-side programming languages. Uh, Microsoft has ASP.NET. PHP, as I said, is, is cross-platform and open source. There's Cold Fusion. There's, there's tons. So we're only going to do a little bit of PHP because many of the concepts in PHP are going to apply no matter what server-side scripting language you choose to use. And the main reason we need to have a little bit of server-side scripting in our lives is so that we can pull this AJAX stuff in, which is, again, where a browser talks to the server in order to retrieve information and dynamically modify what's being displayed in the browser. So the vast majority of what we're going to be doing will actually just take place right in a web browser. Uh, in fact, let's take a look at what we're going to be covering. We're starting with this module, which is number one. Uh, in this video, we're really just going to kind of cover the agenda, but I think most importantly, I'm going to lay out some of the prerequisites so that if you want to follow along, you'll be able to get all the right software bits on your computer uh, so that you can kind of do the same thing I'm doing as we go. Video number two is where we'll really kick things off, and that'll be introducing the hypertext markup language, or HTML. We'll talk about tags and look at some very basic HTML formatting. Uh, look at how to build hyperlinks and anchors so you can link one page to another. And I'll even show you some basics for working in an HTML editor. And, and this is the important bit, how to do some basic troubleshooting of HTML in a web browser. Now in video number three, we're going to move on to working with HTML forms, which is one way of collecting input from a user so that they can submit it to your program. Uh, we'll look at the form tag, some of the different form elements like text boxes and drop-down lists and so forth, what, how to submit the form, what happens when the user clicks the I'm done button, uh, and some of the best practices for putting forms together. Video number four is going to be introducing the cascading style sheets, or CSS. We'll talk about what that is and, and how a CSS combines with an HTML page so that you not only get the contents of the page, but you get it formatted in the way you want. So colors and, and lines and borders and shading and positioning and all kinds of stuff like that. Video number five is where we'll actually look at some of the more commonly used CSS styles. Um, metrics around margins and padding, font control, color control, background images, and, and a bunch of stuff like that. Now, in video number six, we're going to look at the cascade in CSS. So we'll talk about why it's called cascading style sheets and how you can work with local style sheets, uh, per tag styles, work with multiple style sheets, and again, and this is the important tricky bit, troubleshooting the application of style within your HTML page. Then we'll look at page layout in HTML and CSS. Now, this is the idea of, of taking a fairly complicated page layout, you know, maybe one with a, a banner at the top and a menu bar and a sidebar off to the side, and how to actually create that layout using just HTML and CSS. Uh, and we're going to look at some kind of important little tricks there too. And, and that's where we're going to actually pull out multiple different web browsers to experiment with because some of them, you know, kind of work slightly differently from others. So we'll, we'll start talking about things like browser hacks, uh, things that you can do to really tweak your display so that it looks as close as possible between the different web browsers. Now in video number eight, we're going to take everything we've done up till that point and build a complete web page in HTML and CSS completely from scratch. We'll start with the, the core content of the page. We'll add a footer, a navigation bar, a sidebar. 
Um, we'll, we'll break out some modular sections and talk about something called server-side includes that can make building an entire website and making it look consistent a lot easier. Now, nugget number nine is where we're going to jump into the JavaScript language. So we'll talk about what that is, what it, what it looks like, where it fits into a page, and how you can use this to actually make the web browser run programs so that basically the whole program downloads into the web browser at once, and then the user can sit there and interact with it without having to jump between different web pages. Uh, nugget number 10 is where we'll, we'll really dive into the details of the JavaScript or JS language. Uh, we'll look at logical constructs and looping constructs, things like variables and arrays, uh, how to display messages, and again, getting back to that troubleshooting theme, that's where we're going to use one of the browser-based debuggers so that if you run into some bugs in your JavaScript code, you can track those down and squash them a little bit quicker. Now, in nugget number 11, we're going to keep exploring JavaScript by talking about functions, which are the ways that, that, that JavaScript kind of modularizes little bits of code so that you can use them over and over and over. Nugget number 12 is an important one, and it's where we're going to talk about search engine optimization. Now, you know, most of you are, are going to be putting your web page online, and you want search engines like Google and Bing to find it, and you really want them to, to hit your page in such a way that it gets you the best search engine ranking results. And so we're going to talk about some of the best practices around that. In Nugget 13, we're going to introduce a library called jQuery. Now, jQuery is written in JavaScript, and it's actually designed to sort of sit on top of JavaScript and make it easier to do certain things in JavaScript. Easier to do things like retrieving information from a server, modifying the appearance or the content of the web page. So we're really, really going to rely on that. Nugget number 14 is going to seem like a little bit of a tangent, and that's going to be the introduction to the PHP server-side scripting language. And it's going to be a very, very lightweight introduction, I promise. And the reason we're going to look at that is because we want to then be able to go on to nugget number 15, where we combine HTML, JavaScript, jQuery, and PHP to do AJAX. Now, AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. We're not actually going to be working with the XML part of it, but we're still going to be dynamically retrieving something from a server and using that something to dynamically modify what the user sees in the web browser. Uh, it's really very cool stuff, and it actually is quite easy if you take the right approach. We are, of course, going to be focused on the right approach, and that will take us into the home stretch. In nugget number 16, we're going to talk about something called JavaScript Object Notation, or JSON, something that's supported by PHP and most other server-side languages. And it's kind of a more efficient way of transferring information from the server to the browser. So it's still working with that kind of AJAX thing to do dynamic programming. And we're going to look at a complete example of that. Nugget number 17, we're going to look at something called jQuery UI, or user interface. And that's a way of, it's, it's kind of a library that adds on to jQuery and makes it easier to do some really nifty looking user interface elements, things like dialog boxes and, and tabs and, and lots of little effects so that you can make things shrink and grow and hide and show out of nowhere and all cool stuff. Uh, nugget number 18 is where we'll actually start using some of the jQuery UI things once we get that, that foundation. We'll look at, uh, there are some things like accordions and tabs and dialog boxes. And we're also going to use a jQuery plugin called Validator. And that'll come in handy when you're working with HTML forms because it lets your web page sort of validate what your users are typing into the form as they're typing it so that you can give the user feedback on things like, you know, that particular field is required, you have to fill it in, or that particular field requires a phone number, so you need to put a phone number, and what you have in there now doesn't look like a phone number. That's going to kind of bring us into our wrap-up phase. We'll talk about best practices, um, some things to keep your code safe, um, how to clean data, where your scripts should go in the HTML page, um, when and when not to use HTML tables, best practices for page layout, stuff like that. And then finally, in our last nugget, number 20, we're going to bring everything together, create an HTML page, add the CSS, add JavaScript, add jQuery, do the AJAX, test and debug the page. We're going to make a complete page entirely from scratch so that you can see how all of these different things come together. I'm really excited and I'm really eager to get started, but before we do that, we do need to talk about some of the prerequisites, things that you need to have on your computer so that you can do this. 
I actually am going to have three web browsers installed on my computer. I'm going to have Apple's Safari. Uh, and one of the reasons I like this is because it, it does use the Gecko uh, rendering engine. In other words, the bit of the browser that actually creates this display you're looking at uh, is called Gecko. And that's the same engine that's used by Google's Chrome browser. So by working in Safari, we're going to kind of also get the benefit of, of working in Chrome. And there are some really neat debugging and troubleshooting tools built into Safari that I want to show you how to use. I'm also going to be using something called SeaMonkey. Now this is put out by the folks at Mozilla. They're the same folks who create the very popular Firefox browser. So by working with SeaMonkey, we're going to be working in Firefox. But again, SeaMonkey has some neat tools for things like creating an HTML page and working with CSS. So that's one of the reasons I want that here. And of course, we're going to be working with Microsoft's Internet Explorer 9, or actually Internet Explorer 8. And that was kind of the big point I wanted to make, which is that I'm deliberately using a slightly older version of Internet Explorer than is currently available, just because you know, you're still going to see a lot of users coming to your websites that rely on older versions of Internet Explorer. And so I kind of want to show you some of the quirks and things. Uh, the newer versions of Internet Explorer are definitely a lot easier to work with. You know, if you do something and it works in Safari and it works in Firefox, it's probably going to work in IE as well. Now, that's not always the case with 8 and older. So this will give me an opportunity to show you kind of some of those little tweaks and tricks and things like that. So I'll be bopping back and forth between all of those different browsers. And they're ones I recommend you have on your system. The neat thing is that you can get Firefox and Safari and Chrome, no matter what operating system you're working on. So if you happen to be working on a Mac, you can get those same browsers for a Mac. The only thing that'll be different, you obviously cannot get a recent version of Internet Explorer on a Mac. So if you want to work with that, then you're going to have to have access to a Windows based system. Um, there are a few other prerequisites that are going to come down the line, particularly when it comes to writing the server side scripting in PHP. And we're going to cover those when we, we kind of come to that. Um, but if you have even a very, very cheap web hosting account that supports PHP, then you should be able to follow along with those. And you can get that type of, of web hosting for you know, 5 or $6 a month if you want to play along. And there's also a way to do that completely locally on your computer. And when we get to the PHP uh, nugget, that's what I'm going to show you. I'm actually not going to use a hosted server someplace. Uh, I'm actually going to have everything self-contained right on my computer so I can test it completely within my house. Um, even if my internet connection was offline. So that's where we're going to go. I'm still excited to get started. I hope you are too. Let's go.